Hello everyone. In this series, we are covering the most commonly asked Java technical interview questions. And the topic that we are going to cover today is reversing an array. So in this array reverse task, you are asked to write the program that can reverse the given array. And the solution that you provide, it should, it should accurately preserve the elements order and handle the arrays of various different sizes. Okay. For example, if this is the given array, after you reverse that your new array, the, re the reversed array, it should, it should look like this. Last element becomes the first element in the new array, and the first element of the original array becomes the last element in the new array. Okay. So the way, uh, the way the approach for reversing the array is similar with reversing the string. Okay. First, I am going to create an array which is capable enough to contain all the elements of this given array. As you know, our array size is fixed. So when you create the array, you have to set the size. And you have to make sure that uh, the array has the enough capacity to contain all the elements of this given array. So here, here's my new array. And when I set the size of this new array, here I need to provide the, the length number. Okay, and the last number, should I just provide five S since the given array has five elements in it right now? What, uh, what if the given array had 10 elements or 20 elements? Then it's going to be an issue, right? The code that you wrote, it should be flexible. It should work with the arrays with diff different lengths, okay? So therefore, what I can do here is uh, for the size of this array, I will, uh, I will assign the length of the given array. Meaning that if the given array has five elements in it, then this new array size will also be five. Okay. And then next, I need to get each elements of this array starting from last to the first. And then I need to store it to the, to the new array starting from first to the last. Okay. In the opposite order. So let's get the elements of this array, this given array, from last element to the first element. For that, we are going to use the loop. And when I use the loop, the initialization, it should start from the last index number. Because we need to get the elements of this array starting from the last element. And the last, last index number is always equal to the last minus 1. Okay, And index number should, needs to be decreased afterwards. Okay, because first we will get the last in the, uh, last element, and then we need to get the second last element, third last, last element, and go on till we, we reach the index number zero. So therefore the condition should be, as long as the index number is greater than zero, the loop should continue. Okay, and in order to reach the zero, from last index to in order to reach the zero, index number needs to be decreased each time. Okay. So this I, I right here, it is representing the index numbers of this array in the reversed order, okay? For example, let me just display the element at index i in this loop, elements of this array at index i. You see, it got me 0, 15, 30, 5, 10. 0, 15, 30, 5, 10. It got me the elements in the reversed order, okay? And those elements that we got in the reverse order, they should be assigned to the indexes of this new array. Okay, so which means I need to assign each of those elements that we got from the reverse order needs to be assigned to the new array. In which order? In the regular or regular index order. Okay, but do I have a variable that is representing the index numbers of this new array in the regular order? We don't. We only have i right now, right? You could also declare your second variable uh, in the initialization of this for loop. After this i is declared, you give a comma and then you can declare another variable like j. So j, it starts from index zero. i, it started from the last index, but j, it starts from index zero. And as for the condition, I don't have to change it because both of the arrays, they have the same length, okay? And every time when i is decreased by 1, j needs to be increased by 1. 
Okay, so but I can use this I to get the elements of this given array in the reverse order and then I can use I can assign this element to the index J of the new array. Okay, meaning that the last element when uh, when the loop first executed the last element of this given array will be assigned to the index zero of the new array. And when the loop executed for a second time, the second last element of this given array will be assigned to the index one of the new array. Because every time when i is decreased, j is increased by one. Okay. I started from the last index of this array, and j is started from index zero. So i and j they are in the opposite directions. And afterwards, if I print my array. In order to print array, again, you still need to call the toString method from arrays utility class. And then you pass the array that you would like to print. New array. And once I print it, you see, this, give, this array right now has been reversed. Okay. Doesn't matter if you have integer array or char array, as long as you are applying the same approach, you will be able to reverse any given array and this approach it also applies to uh, to the array with any length for example if i had multiple elements in this array if i run it i will still get the reverse version of that array okay so make sure that what is i and j are are used for here i is the index numbers of this first given array in the reverse order j is this the index number of this new array in the regular index order in order to get the reverse version of this given array, we need to get each element of the given array in the reverse order, starting from last to the first elements. And then we store them into the new array, starting from index 0 to the last index. In this order, we need to store those elements in. Then at the end, after the, after the loop finished executing, then you will have the array that has been reversed. Okay. And if you have any question regarding this loop and i, j, those variables that we have used here, feel free to leave comment in the uh, in the comment section. I will reply to your comment. Okay. And if you found a different approach to this uh, the same exact task, please uh, please feel free to check out uh, and test it with the different size of arrays. And as long as it's giving you the right expected output, then the solution would still work. Okay. So the main uh, main goal of the interviewer here is just to see uh, the approach, the, your problem solving skills, just to see how, how well uh, you can apply the logic into this task. Please hit the like button if you found this video helpful and consider to subscribe to our channel if you would like to stay connected. Also, let me know in the comment section on which Java technical interview question you want me to cover next. Thank you so much. See you all in the next video.